We headed back to the boat from the hot springs. Our time was coming to an end at Haida Gwaii because we wanted to keep on moving north, closer to Alaska. Little did we know we would make a crazy discovery on the boat before we weighed anchor. And no, it was not this little rascal. Although it was pretty cute. Hun, those are bullets, not batteries. Is there a gun? I, I don't think so. There's an orange thing that I can't see past. It's working. Okay, so I found a secret hidden hiding spot on the boat that we didn't know existed and it was filled with bullets. I don't really know what to think, to be honest. I was down there scrubbing the area, trying to clear it up a bit and I realised a little piece of this panel could lift up and I thought maybe it was just broken but I was pulling it up a little bit and the whole kind of thing came off and it was clearly a spot to store things that was well and truly hidden. And that's when I kind of got a torch, looked down, I could kind of just get one eye in to see. I thought it was just rubbish and some batteries because literally from this angle, these look exactly like batteries. I don't know if you can tell, but I thought they were batteries, but I came to get Darcy to say I found like a hidden spot that we can put things in. And so I grabbed the camera because the camera has a lens, uh, as a screen that can move. And also I wanted to show you guys uh, before I realized how sweet of a hiding spot it was. Uh, so as soon as I got the camera to focus uh, and uh, the screen kind of turned my way, I, I immediately knew that I wasn't looking at batteries, I was looking at a bunch of bullets. Mm. <laughs> Are we going to get in a heap of trouble because we're about to cross the border into America? If there's bullets on the boat, is there something else that we haven't found, like a gun further down in this hidey hole? Yeah. We managed to hand off all the bullets to a nice cruising couple named Fred and Linda. With that problem taken care of, we could focus on our second overnight sail. Oh, and Fred and Linda asked us to use fake names. This is my second ever overnight crossing, just a couple of days after the first ever crossing overnight. And it's polar opposites to the first. The first was honestly quite scary. It was super dark, big waves, taking them on the beam, really rolly. I got seasick. First time doing shifts, so first time up here totally alone. Yeah, and it was long for me. The longest I've ever gone, 28 hours. And I was glad to get to land, but yeah, tonight's totally different. It's calm, we're running with the wind, sails are up and it's just totally peaceful and not very rough. I think we're protected a bit by the Haida Gwaii Islands as we're crossing back over to the mainland now to make our way closer up to Alaska, almost there. And yeah, it's nice. I'm glad I've done the first one because I think it's going to just be easier and I'm more used to it and it's always the first one that's the hardest right so you just have to jump right in and I've done that first step's the hardest As day turned to night and then back again, we woke up with thick fog covering the anchorage.
right, we're here. We made it. Dundas Island. Not Alaska yet. Uh, soon to be Alaska. Uh, we decided to duck in here, get a little sleep. We're just right by the border right now. It's an awesome spot to be. There's fish jumping everywhere. <laughs> the Anchorage Review said that there was really good fishing outside. So, and we're the only people here. There's nobody else here. This is amazing. Yeah, it's super nice. We did have a bit of a mishap when we motored into the anchorage. <laughs> the engine made a funny sound. We turned it off quickly and realized that the jib sheet on the port side was caught in the engine. Uh, it, it has happened before. <laughs> uh, you know what? It, it has happened once before. We'll, we'll admit it. Yeah. Uh, we need to be better at making sure our lines stay out of the water. We're looking at trying to reroute the jib sheets, but we're not quite sure how to. Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't know. It, it, we'll have to dive in. Uh, we were only like idling the engine in reverse when it happened. So hopefully it's not wrapped up too, too much and we can still salvage the jib sheet. Uh, last time when the same thing happened, it wasn't too bad. So hopefully it's not too bad this time. Yeah. We'll have a look at some point. <laughs> yeah, but we're here. Hey! Yeah. All right, we are going fishing. We have two fishing rods, a net, some other fishing stuff. <laughs> and we're not coming back to the boat until we catch something. Yeah. Something big. Something big or a salmon. Or a salmon. I'd really love to catch a salmon. <laughs> we have the ID charts as well so we can ID the salmon. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. All right, this is what we're gonna try. $24 for this thing. It's insane, 24 bucks. But it's gonna catch us a big halibut. Okay, cut. It's gonna catch us a big lingcot. Okay, cut again. It's gonna catch us something big. Salmon. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is not gonna catch us a salmon. And if it does, that salmon is on something. <laughs> oh. Oh. Man, I'm gonna get fit doing fishing. Oh, I did catch something. Oh. Yvette was using this when she caught the halibut, but she didn't even really catch the halibut. <laughs> I did say. I handed her my rod <laughs> because I was setting up her rod and then she managed to catch the fish in like the 20 seconds that she was holding my rod, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Still counts. Yeah. All right, hon, first halibut. Yeah. Let us see here. <laughs> Definitely the biggest fish we've ever caught. And I'm gonna fill it up now and go back out because we caught it pretty quick. <laughs> it took, took about five minutes. Yeah. We're gonna watch a YouTube video on how to how to do this because I have no idea. Um, but hopefully it goes all right and then we can have it for dinner. We're gonna go spear fishing. It's my first time ever, so I'm pretty excited. I've done free diving maybe three times before. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna catch a fish or spear a fish for the first time. Now I've just got to put my wetsuit on. It's pretty tight. Ready to go? <laughs> yep. <sighs>
First fish? Yeah, it's the best, best spear fish. <laughs> first spear fish. All right, let's get him on the pan. Yeah, it's greenling, isn't it? Yeah, greenling, yep. That's how we do now. We have to get one of those things to pull the Q flag up and to, to pull it down, but we don't have one. But it's done. We just crossed the border. Yay. That's the border. That's us. We crossed it. <laughs> so uh, we're pretty much world cruisers now. <laughs> yeah. First step, anyway. <laughs> we can't yeah. see anything. There's fog all around us. That's okay. We're in Alaska. We have radar. We feel safe. The sun's finally coming out, which is really nice because I was really, really chilly this morning. It was a really cold one when we got up early. And I went and found all my warmest clothes that I possibly could because I don't take the cold very well coming from Australia. But it's really starting to heat up nicely now with the sun. And it's a beautiful, calm morning. It's really, really nice, crossing. Darcy's going to have a bit of a nap and then I'll probably go down for one as well because we had a bit of a late night and got up really, really early. But. Yeah, I'm very, very excited to be going to Alaska today and we've crossed over the border. Bar Harbor Harbor Master, Bar Harbor Harbor Master. This is sailing vessel Supernova, sailing vessel Supernova. Do you have a copy? Supernova, Harbor Master. Hi, Harbor Master. Uh, this is Supernova. Uh, we checked in on the check in app and we've been advised that we have to go to the customs office and we called Bar Harbor and they asked us to call you and said you would tell us where to go. Yeah, Roger that. Um, how long are you? Are they going to need a more than just for a couple of hours. Uh, we figure we only need it for a couple of hours uh, and we're 50 feet long. Roger that. How about uh, Bar Harbor North in the end of Float 11? 10-4. Bar Harbor North, north at the end of Float 11. Uh, standing by on channel 7-3. Yes, affirmative. Uh, Harbor Mass, standby 1673. We made it to Ketchikan, Alaska. We've done the app that you do to check in, but now we have to go to the actual office and check in properly. I think that's because I'm Australian, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, Canadians don't usually have this hard of a time, but anyway, we're here. <laughs> so let's go check in. Hopefully we get to stay. <laughs> So it turns out I didn't have the right stuff to get into America. 
Luckily the three men working here were extremely nice and have given me a visa but it cost $585 and it's a one time only so it'll last our couple of weeks here and that's it. So it's an expensive couple of weeks on top of everything that's already cost heaps. But at least I'm allowed to stay and I guess I'll be even more looking at all the details in future. I'm normally pretty good with this sort of thing but when we went to Seattle earlier in the year we talked for quite a while with the border guard who pulled us out of the car because I was Aussie and he specifically told us it would be fine with the thing he was giving us then to sail into Alaska but it clearly wasn't. Yeah, $585. Let's get our money's worth. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. see every damn thing in this place. We're going to see some bears. <laughs> and catch some salmon. <laughs> yeah. It's eight in the morning and we're going to go up to the marina office that's opened and let them know that we ended up staying overnight instead of the one hour that we'd planned. So we need to pay and apologize. They were closed by the time we finally got back from the visa place and the visa issue. So that wasn't in the plan. We then have to go the 40 minute walk back to the customs office to actually get my visa because they couldn't actually give it to us yesterday because the boss wasn't in and they need him to sign off on it. So hopefully that's all going to be okay. I have paid the $585, so there shouldn't be an issue. And then we're going to walk back, go do some grocery shopping, and then have a shower finally. Take two. I got my visa, yay! Now, time to have some fun. This was the old red light district back in the day and there's a whole lot of salmon running up the river. done shopping, now it's time for some quick showers before we head off and go exploring. Courtesy flags can be pretty expensive, so we bought a pack of 
200 decorative flags on a one long string off Amazon for 20 bucks. Probably not great quality, but we'll see. And at least we've got some to start off with for the trip. And it's like 200 random countries. Should do us for a little while. <laughs> Don't know if they've got Australia, but. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that down there and find the American one again. Where'd it go? Oh God. <laughs> there we go. All right, so they're all connected. I think, yeah. I'm gonna cut them in the middle so we can Hopefully use the ones next to them, although I don't know what they all are just yet. There we go. Let's, see. <laughs> Let's go put it up. As we left Ketchikan surrounded by float planes and cruise ships, we were super excited to get out of civilization and experience the wild side of Alaska. See you next week and don't forget to subscribe if you want to join us on this massive adventure.